Uh, hello everyone, uh, I hope you are doing well. Uh, this is a session two of the development of truth. So if you haven't seen the session one, uh, may I request you to see the session one first and then come to the session two and uh, please watch the complete session two. So in the session two, what we are going to do today is uh, we will do uh, a rapid review of the session one. Uh, in session one, we have done the formation of the dental lamina and the vestibular lamina. And the vestibular lamina, it later, there's a degeneration, there's a programmed degeneration, and that result in the formation of the vestibular cleft. Uh, similarly, there were some changes in the connective tissue, or for example, there is condensation of connective tissue and the connective tissue cells, uh, they have uh, the neural crest cells. So if you're if you interested to see the complete uh, session one, uh, the link is in the description. In this session, we will do the bird and the cap stages of tooth development. There are some transitory structures that are formed during the bird and the cap stages of tooth development. We will discuss those transitory structures as well. So in the bird stage, uh, the epithelium, epithelium, it further invades into the ectomesenchyme and it assume a bird shape appearance. Here you can see the dental lamina, the interior part of the dental lamina, it forms a bird shape appearance. There you can see. Now the epithelial cells, these all are the epithelial cells. The, so epithelial cells of the bird, they show little change in shape or function as compared to the dental lamina cells. So the cells, they are poorly differentiated. In the mesenchyme, there is condensation of mesenchyme, meaning the connective tissue cells, they are surrounding this bird. They are densely populated around this bird. In the epithelium and the connective tissue, it is separated by a basement membrane. So this is the basement membrane that is separating the epithelial bird from the rest of the connective tissue. The next stage is the cap stage of tooth development. So in the cap stage, there is differential cell division in the bird. It means there is unequal division in some part of the bird that leads to a formation of a cap-like structure. So this is the cap-like structure and this is a cap stage of tooth development. Now in this stage, you can see that there are a variety of cell types that are over here. For example, these cell types, uh, these cells that are present in the center of the cap are different from the, cell, the cells that are present below the cap. Or these cells are different from the cells that are lining the, the outer part of the cap. So this uh, phenomenon is known as histodifferentiation. It means there is differentiation of cells. So there is more histodifferentiation if you compare it with the previous caps, uh, uh, previous bird stage of tooth development. Now this cap shaped structure is known as the dental organ or commonly known as enamel organ. So this cap shaped structure is the enamel organ. Now further in the cap stage, there are some cells that are present just below the cap. If you will see, there are some cells that are present just below the cap and these cells are known as dental papilla cells. Now there are some cells, similar ectomesenchymal cells that are surrounding the dental papilla that, and, and uh, the enamel organ. So these cells that are encapsulating or surrounding the dental papilla and the enamel organ, these cells are known as dental follicular cells. So these dental papilla cells in the next stages of tooth development, they will differentiate and further differentiate and they will help in the formation of dentin and pulp. While these dental follicular cells that are surrounding the enamel organ and the dental papilla, they will help in the formation of the supporting tissues of the tooth. And by supporting tissues, we mean they will help in the formation of the alveolar bone, periodontal ligaments, and cementum. Now, there is a term that is known as tooth germ. By tooth germ, we mean enamel organ, this structure, 
the dental papilla cells and dental follicle cells. So these cells, these all of this, these it forms a tooth germ. So tooth germ means enamel organ, dental papilla, and dental follicle. Now, in the cap stage, there are some cells that are present in the center of the enamel organ. These cells, initially, their shape is not like this. They are polygonal in shape. They are of different shape. And these cells, they are attached with each other with the help of desmosomes. And in initially. So these cells, they are attached with each other with the help of desmosomes. We are going, we will discuss this in more detail when we will be doing oral mucosa. So these are the desmosomal attachments. Um, this is the nucleus. So these cells, initially, they are present in the center of the enamel organ. They started secreting glycosaminoglycans, which is a polysaccharide. And this glycosaminoglycans is hydrophilic. So this glycosaminoglycans, it started accumulating water. So And these cells, they become star-shaped. Because there's movement of water from outside the enamel organ. I'll show you. So, so these cells, they become star shaped. And now the cells, they are, they started accumulating water. So the water, it comes in from outside the enamel organ towards the inside of enamel organ and start accumulating in between the cells, intercellular space. The water it start accumulating over here, over here, everywhere in between the cells. So now the cells they are only attached with each other with the help of desmosomes. So there's only now desmosomal attachments. So there's only desmosomal attachments now. So these cells, they become star-shaped because of this accumulation of water. So cells are forced apart and they are only contact with each other with the help of desmosomes. Let me erase this. So here, one. So the cells, they are only contact with each other with the help of desmosomes. So these cells, they become star-shaped, and we call these star-shaped cells as stellate reticulum cells. Now, there are two other types of cells as well. There are some cells that are lining the peripheral or outer part of the enamel organ that is towards the dental follicle cells. And these cells are known as outer enamel epithelium. And outside this outer enamel epithelium, there's a basement membrane that is separating outer enamel epithelium from the dental follicle cells. There are inner enamel epithelium over here that is lining the inner surface of the enamel organ towards the dental papilla and there's a they are separated from the dental papilla by a basement membrane so now stellate reticulum cells outer enamel epithelium inner enamel epithelium these are the dental papilla cells and these are dental follicular cells now, there are some transitory or temporary structures that are formed during uh, tooth development. So one of this, uh, these structure is the enamel niche. So 
Tooth germ in some sections show double attachment. So dental lamina is not a single attachment. Sometimes there are two or three attachments. So dental uh, lamina is not a rod. In fact, there sometimes it has two attachments. For example, this is one attachment and this is one attachment. And in between these attachments, connective tissue is filled. The same connective tissue that is surrounding this enamel organ. And this portion is known as the central portion that contains connective tissue. It is known as enamel niche. There's another structure that is known as enamel knot. So enamel knot are basically the clusters of cells that form a bulge uh, present in the enamel organ. So these are the clusters of cells that are forming a bulge and it is present in the enamel organ near the inner enamel epithelium. So these clusters of cells, uh, they uh, may uh, have this function that they may act as a signaling center and they express certain growth factors that, that help in the transformation of cap into a um, into bell. Um, these uh, enamel knots, they are usually present in, uh, at the incisal edge or the cusp tip. There's another structure that is called enamel cord. So enamel cord, these are basically the strands of cells that extend into the stellate reticulum to the outer enamel epithelium. So here you can see these are the strand of cells that are extending from enamel knot to the outer enamel epithelium. So sometimes this structure is also referred as enamel septum. It may provide continuous supply of cells uh, to the enamel knot or to the inner enamel epithelium. So these are the three, these were the three transitory structures, enamel knot, enamel cord, and enamel niche. So this is the end of session two. In next in next session, we will be doing a bell stage of tooth development. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, you can you may ask in the comments. Uh, please do give me your feedback in form of a like or comment. Um, thank you very much again for watching.